Okay, let's keep going. Round 9. Let's do this. 2014 US Chess Championship. And let's move to the games. Let's do it. Do it, do it now. So, before this round, Akopian leading by a full point. Imagine that. Followed by Lenderman and Kamski. Point behind. Yeah. And uh, in the women's, Satomsky also leading by a point against uh, Irina Crush. But let's move on to the games. Uh, first, have a look at Ehrenberg and Fredell. And Josh Fredell has been uh, moving up the leaderboard in the later rounds, stringing some victories together. And here he's black in a Sicilian. And I haven't had time to to look at these games almost at all. I mean, some of the top games, I have no clue what happened in this game, but no result. And okay, white looks looks solid here. I mean, black taking here. Okay, it's a double pawn, but white would have the bishop pair would get immediate rook to c7. So I was not a choice for black. F4. Takes a6. This um, first glance it looks good for white because you know weak pawns uh, doubled uh, past pawns connected past pawns. But what? Yeah, I'm confused because. Uh, Fredell actually won this game, so this must have been some... Uh... Here gets the pawn back though. Queen there, interesting move because if we take, we have back rank issues. But uh, did he have to lose this pawn? What happens if we just protect it like this d3? It's a bit passive and... Yeah, maybe there's also back rank issues, so maybe something that... Okay, we, we, we can deal with it, but maybe it's not what uh, Ehrenberg was looking for, so he gave up his pawn back, trying to uh, get these pawns rolling, but now suddenly black has some play. It looked like he was just in trouble earlier, but... But now maybe uh, he has his own threats. I mean, if you can open a diagonal, we could have some dangers here. King is not really secure, and this e pawn could make an appearance soon. Maybe even now, yeah. And again, you can't take with either piece. Pretty nice, because both of them are now made. So putting on the screws here a little bit, turning the tables. Oh, what's that? What the hell's that? Looks, just looks like desperation, complete desperation. And okay, there's. Uh, if we take on e1, looks like perpetual. That's the idea of this. So if we take here, Czechoslovakia, and we have to go back because now we don't have this uh, because it's made. It's a mouse of course. But uh, what happened? After check. Before check, yeah, that's checkmate actually. <laughs> so black wins. So nice come from behind the victory there, Perfidel, and this, yeah, moves him into contention really. Um, so Kamsky, uh, okay, Lendeman, Lendeman, Narodzicki, Narodzicki has been having a solid tournament. And Lenderman, of course, as well. I mean, he was the leader, but then he lost two games. But now he has recovered. Here we have this King's Indian line that Narodinsky, uh tried earlier in, in, the, in the tournament. I think against Shankland. I'm not sure. But he played it before in this tournament. And we got a position. Okay, it looked like it shouldn't be anything much. Uh, Black went for this minority attack. 
Queen side. Yeah, a4. Or white took. We have some exchanges and this doesn't look like much for for either side. Slightly better for white probably because of, of the Saver King. And the fact that we can maybe attack some pawns here on the queen side. At some point. So let's move on to the critical point. And that's around, around somewhere. It's coming up. So okay, equal material. But what happened was was kind of strange here. G3, okay, securing the king a little bit. But now, yeah, bishop a1. I'm not sure if this was a blunder uh, or if it was before. But after this, white had a nice maneuver here. Rook a4 attacking the bishop. Bishop moved again. Rook a7 attacking the queen. But also this. And now the floodgates open. And you can't go queen, uh, queen here because of this, I presume. I think the pose of this looks like it's walking into some kind of mid. I mean, we don't even have to calculate. Um, there's going to be some checks, and they're not, not defenders, so it should be made. So therefore, queen back, but now queen takes h7, and now it's it's problem. And queen g7 picks up the bishop. Uh, yeah. If we're, if we're not mating, you know, but uh, picking up the bishop should be enough. No, but then we have check, check. Yeah, well, we can just take the bishop if you want, because okay, king f2 covers the check here. So nothing further. But there might be something stronger even, but either way a nice win for Landerman, his second in a row, so now he has caught up with uh, Okopian. But Okopian has a game in hand here, which we haven't looked at. Uh, Kamsky Muller. Kamsky was also a point behind Landerman. And he played the London system against Muller. C3 here, okay. I don't think it's really necessary against the King's Indian setup so early, but that's what he played. We have an early queen trade and takes on c5. So here he grabs some space with uh, g4 and e4, followed by g5. And around here he felt like he should be able to just give black problems. He, had to, he thought he would have to take on g4. You play king e2 and black would have problems. But black last out here with, with b5. Which looks dangerous because now we have two pawns attacked and we can't really defend them. But after b4, rook takes c5, rook b8, a nice move. Now we're threatening to take and, and simplify here. I can't really do much about it, so king e2. But now we regain the pawn. Pawn to e5. And pawn to f6, trying to simplify. So rook a1, takes on e5, takes on a7. And yeah, I think we can uh, uh, somehow some of the, of the wins by Kamsky or, or just his playing style in general. I have a. I think this picture sums it up. If you're playing Kamsky, you're, you're, the, you're Ben Stiller here. You're suffering. <laughs> and, okay. You might give up because of uh, the hairy chest in your face, but uh, if you can uh, soak it up, then maybe you get a draw. But uh, most likely people will, uh, will cave in and uh, we'll see how uh, Muller did in this one. So here... Yeah, Kamsky thought maybe c4 was, was better to preserve a pawn on, on the queen side, but still he has some theoretical ads here because he's up a pawn. But 3 against 2 on the, on the king side and hard to make any progress. And most likely this is just a draw and you can't make any, any, any good progress here. Taking this pawn here. And yeah, we kind of have to advance it if we go back, then just jack and then attack it again. So f6 is the only try. 
And now he goes for uh, checks behind the pawn, rook g7, g6, the only way to try and go forward, but black has a nice saving uh, resource here, he takes on g6. And if we take with the rook, I don't think we can make a check here. And this is drawn because we have to give a stalemate there and instead he took with the king but this allows rook h6 another stalemate idea nice one to take stalemate and if we move to f7 like it did in the game it doesn't matter rook takes f6 same stalemate and there's no way to be stubborn here if you don't take the rook then actually you're losing your own rook so white had to allow the stalemate here and the draw is weird. So, okay. Um, Ramirez and Onichuk made a draw here. Uh, they're both out of contention. Uh, Robson actually beat Karyev. Let's look at that because it was a disaster game. And uh, I believe Robson and Champion are actually having a mini tournament of sorts because they're playing for a spot on the US Olympic team. And uh, this was a Scotch, then look, okay, looks maybe slightly better than white because of the structure, but we'll see what happens. Uh, what takes a2, that takes e6. Yeah, still a better structure for white, better minor piece. And yeah, maybe, maybe shades of, of Poppy Fisher here with uh, the king's bishop against the knight. We had a famous ending, which everyone should know. Where he displayed the uh, superiority of, of the bishop against the, uh, the knight in positions with pawns on each side. Here he's close to winning a pawn, but no cigar. So pawns are still equal, so maybe this, uh, I haven't seen this game, maybe it's a nice end game by, by white. Uh, we can't take on, on e8 because check. Picking up, picking up the rook, so a7, check, check, and bishop f7 maybe, no it has d6 of course. So through some clever maneuvering here, uh, he won a pawn here. And looks like he managed to uh, convert it. Pawns to d5. And yeah, probably we can just play b3 here, be solid. Yeah, swing the rook over at some point. And e5, and if check now, we can take. Which actually. Oh, interesting. Ah, he sacrificed the exchange for a fast pawn that he can't deal with. That was nice, basically. Is it to c4 now? Or king e4. And then bishop c4, yeah, now there are no checks, no check here. We have to check here though. But now it goes the pawn, right? Working off the rook. That's actually pretty nice if, if it's all, all working out. Yeah, that looks like a nice, nice grind here by Robson. I haven't had, you know, time to really check it out, but it looks nice. It's okay. Important win for Robson, you know, in regards to the Olympic team, but out of contention in the tournament. But now Shankland against Copian. And Copian leading by a point. This is the last game we look at, so Lendeman has caught up to him, and Kamski is half a point behind. And yeah, we had the Karakhan advanced variation, and this move c3 wasn't supposed to be anything anything great for white, but Shankland said he had some ideas, and it's interesting, he gets the bishop pair, and it seems like he's always defending this pawn tactically, because if we take, then uh, bishop takes f5, uh, 
there must be some problems with this with this pin. But we'll have a better structure also. The G6. And the white always has the knocking advantage of the bishop here. Here's preventing castling. H4 and yeah, Copeland said he should have played h5 himself because now white is undermining him. So bishop pair, centralized works. King still in the center. We can sacrifice in g6 in some cases. Black has to watch out for c4 breaks if, if the knight moves. So probably a difficult position for black. Is it back to c1? Yeah, once you have the rooks out, just swinging the bishop back is always interesting to cover this weakness because the bishop can always re enter the game if and when it wants. Yeah, this is similar, a similar strategy that was employed against me in the, in, in the tournament game last Monday against the Grandmaster, which will upload to YouTube hopefully soon. Still white just keeping all the advantages of his position and here it looked like maybe a copy and overlook something because b4 the queen has no squares we have to sacrifice a piece but what's going on we'll take c4 what did we take on b4 maybe a queen here pin attack yeah so instead it takes on c4 and now two pieces for the rook and those pieces are the bishop pair. Yeah, now we we'll take care of this. And yeah, I mean, this is like a Swiss cheese here, holes all over the place. So white has material equality, bishop a4 check, king back. And bishop e3, this bishop is coming to c5 with decisive fact. So Shankland again throws a spanner in the works. Dethrones the leader. He also beat Lenderman when he was leading. And now he beats uh, Akopian. And this means we have a tie at the top. So shaping up to be really exciting in, in, in the last two rounds. And let's, before we quit, have a look at the women because. A decisive game, very important game, Cross with White against Satonsky. And if Cross doesn't win here, then the tournament is basically over because before this round Satonsky had a one point lead. So a must win situation for uh, Cross, and they enter this theoretical line here in the uh, Catalan, which is basically a, a queen sacrifice for black, but no, uh, it's if uh, black takes on t1, yeah. Black can take on d1 here, and that's con considered to be a somewhat, I mean, slightly better for white. Uh, you can see this in, in the other books. He had some new ideas for white for, uh, for a slight edge, but he took on c6, and in this case, white gets uh, an endgame here, where white simply has the better pawn structure, and she's going to play for, uh, for a small advantage. In this queenless middle game or end game, whichever you prefer. It's closer to the end game actually. Uh, bishop e3, d2. So, yeah, black has these four pawn islands, so black's pawns are in general weaker. White can, yeah, always gun up on this c pawn, which black must keep an eye on. Also, we have options. With knight a5, putting posing up these in c5 also, so comfortable for white, and now c5. Knight back to e3. This knight wants to jump to c4, so this knight must interpose and exchange. E6, so definitely better for white. Some pressure, but can we win a pawn or something? Okay, g so improves the king. Attacking this again, we can improve the king further at some point. Maybe king d3 to c4. But here black plays c4, so she wants to defend actively. And well, it turns out that it's hard to defend this actually. 
And maybe if you defend it, then we can think about something like this. So this she decided to uh, give up a pawn here. Rook takes a7. So a pawn up for a crush here. He gets another pawn, but white's going to uh, black's going to get one back. So white will remain up a pawn. And white can't uh, take the pawn because once the rook was on a3, he had a pin here, threatening bishop c5. So king runs to h3, and what happens from here? We take on, on a4, and because we uh, took the king away from e4, we can take on e4. So black is only down a pawn. But white does have connected pass pawns, and these are really dangerous. And I think the rook ending is it's, uh, close to winning for white if we uh, exchange the bishops. So eight four jack on moves. And eventually we had the bishop exchange, I think. Eight six, bishop there, bishop g five. Bishop e three jack, yeah. Now if you take we have the bishop exchange and that's what happened. But I believe this is uh, just winning for white. And the simple reason is we can always sack our rook for the pawn, and then we have two pawns that the rook can't deal with. That's indeed what happened. Okay, here the trick was, I guess, if it's g6, then uh, this is the last trick for for black. <laughs> Pinning the rook, so it can't move. And if you take, then we make a queen. Last trick, but Irina Crush was up to the task, rook e8. And now she can take on e2. And nothing to be done here. Uh, this pawn's got a queen. And it got queened here. Uh, you can't cut the pawn behind it, so white wins. And in fact, uh, Satonsky resigned in this position. So this means that, yeah, Krush and Satonsky are tight. For Sunday's round, they will uh, have a rest day while the men play their uh, tenth round, and then on Monday, a uh, crucial game for both. They have to win, and if they both win, I believe we have a playoff. And yeah, quite possibly we, we will have playoffs on both sides. But on the men's side, interesting pairings. Uh, Friedel, who has been moving close to the top, is actually playing Kamski uh, in one of the last two rounds. So he might have chances to catch up. And Kopion is playing, I think, Lenderman and Kamski. So uh, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, some uh, important games in the last few rounds so this was round nine for the men round eight for the women and yeah things are coming to to an end here and, and exciting to see what happens in the last last two rounds for the men and the last round for the women so thanks for watching this i will see you later bye bye